Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are uh, continuing our work out at Rosalina Memorial Station uh, this episode. This is uh, an old RA9B or E HV, uh, which is an amazing thing to bring out of the staples after God a million years of not flying one of these. It is topped off with our uh, lunar research hopper probe thing. We're going to fly to the research center. It has two command seats. We'll crew it up. It'll jump from biome and then return, and then go to a different biome and return, gathering scientific information and data to be researched at the uh, moon base. It's going to greatly expand its uh, useful life as a center of operations out on the moon. Uh, we just we need to get it there, and that's what we'll be doing today, thanks to this uh, glorious old piece of machinery. Uh, we've not flown one of these in a very, very long time, and uh, I'm really happy to see it back. Uh, I've made some small changes to the HV upper stage, expanded the tanks a little bit. Uh, we might be pushing those RL-10s a little past the rated runtime, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Of course, all the fuel in the lander itself is locked. Um, other than that, upgrades to the thrusters. Yeah, that should be it. So anyway, uh, our relative inclination with the moon is uh, at an acceptable level, so let's just go ahead and get this flight underway. SAS is on, throttle is set to full, ignition sequence start. That's a good light. Let's get these clamps off. Uh, because of the changes I made to the upper stage, it's a little slower off the pad than uh, some of our other really old RA-9 flights, but uh, I have every belief that the vehicle is entirely capable of handling all of this, other than the fact that it's oriented very weirdly. Uh, we need to uh, roll, program this around, and get this into a vector I am used to. I know, I took the long way around, but that's just uh, me. And let's uh, calm that down a little bit. We don't need to start our gravity turn just yet. That is a uh, much more acceptable flight path, although it's causing havoc with our relative inclination. I will correct that as the flight progresses. I'm gonna wax nostalgic for a little while and uh, remember how good this thing was to fly, even though the clouds are being extraordinarily stupid today. Anyway, I will see all of you in orbit. My joy will be short-lived, however, as I uh, regret to inform you that this quickly devolves into one of the dumbest episodes I've ever had to record, and not for anything that happened gameplay-wise, just uh, life in general. Um, there was a power outage, there were a couple of small household emergencies that caused recording to get uh, paused, resumed, and otherwise screwy uh, a few times. So I'm just going to apologize for all of the nonsense in advance, but uh, we'll cover all of those areas when we get to them. Uh, in the meantime, this uh, RA-9 was behaving beautifully. It was a uh, nice, easy trip up to altitude, although it does fly considerably differently than the uh, DN series. It does need to be lofted uh, a little bit higher, although uh, I guess technically it's trying to pull more tonnage since we've got the uh, expanded HV upper stage and it's for RL-10 engines, which are super useful, but I had uh, intended on using it for a circularization burn around the moon uh, instead of putting an additional uh, capture stage underneath our uh, lander itself. Um, it just seemed to make more sense to add an extra half meter to the uh, HV upper stage and make sure that the uh, RL-10s would tolerate the runtime, which they would. I mean, I think it was, I think they were limited to like 7 minutes 55 seconds and we're at like 8 minutes 13 seconds, but considering how much boil off we're going to have between uh, low Earth orbit and the moon, I did not think it was going to be a, uh, a big deal. We would probably uh, lessen our runtime considerably by then, and we could, in theory, vent off uh, some of the additional liquid oxygen that did not boil off to, uh, to compensate. Anyway, there is our core stage separation. Uh, I missed telling you about booster set, but I'm sure you saw it happen and what was kind of a disappointing Korelev cross. Uh, all four RL-10s lit nicely, and they are going to uh, finish rounding out our two-orbit burn, uh, hopefully right around the time that we are reaching our apogee, uh, if I can fly this correctly, which is always a dubious claim at best. 
Eh. But anyway, this uh, this little uh, crewable lander, also an automatable lander, is uh, going to be responsible for expanding our moon base operations well into the next couple of years. Just uh, requires a little biome hopping and uh, a little bit of refueling, which will probably be our next flight out to the moon. Anyway, here's old me. All right, 261 by 215, not terrible. Uh, 4.9 kilometers per second left in the tank. That's even better. So uh, let's get ourselves plotted for the moon. I guess I could have left that periapsis a little bit lower. Oh, that was not what I meant to do. But we will very quickly do what I did intend to do, select the moon as our target, and start to uh, plot our lunar injection burn. Uh, we don't really need to be particularly efficient, but sometimes it helps. Well, that's interesting. We can either impact the moon or miss it entirely, which is typical of KSP in every sense of the word. That looks like a pretty solid approach. Of course, we'll tune it a little on our own. 3.1 kilometers per second in 31 minutes. Excellent. So we will just... Uh, gear ourselves into our uh, maneuver node by disabling SAS temporarily, letting it coast around off a little tap from our RCS thrusters. We might want some of that fuel later on, so uh, why not save it, make sure that we can ullage our RL-10s effectively, even way out by the moon, and then time warp around and get this burn underway. So uh, here's old me for live commentary. All right, we are two minutes, 52 seconds out from the node. Let's go ahead and ullage in these engines. Stable. Ignition. Good light on all four. And we are underway. So it will be uh, uh, quite a long burn on uh, all four of our RL-10s. And uh, not a whole lot to talk about. Not really a spectacular view to look at either. I will get impatient for a little bit and kind of run these RCS thrusters. Uh, grab a screeny because that's about the only good eye candy we have, although I feel like I've taken this picture at least 200 times during the course of this series at this point, but uh, never gets less amazing, really. But anyway, uh, it's gotten us all the way out to the moon. We will plot our node to circularize when we get there. Uh, not a particularly quick journey, but uh, it helps. And uh, we will get our panels angled into the sun just as much as we can, sort of, to uh, try to mitigate some of this battery draw from this uh, computer core down at the, the bottom of the HV stage, which is consuming a considerable amount of electric charge. You'll see our batteries mostly drain there. And that's the thing I forgot to install on this lander. Batteries. And here's our first screw up. Uh, power at my house went out. I, I did lose some footage, um, but I was able to recover the mission as we were intercepting the moon and coming to a periapsis that was nothing like what we plotted, about a, a million meters or so. But we had the Delta V to spare, but not really the time to go back and load from a different save file because I really wanted to get this out um, as soon as I could just to make sure that I could get an episode to you. And, yeah, so that was our, our first fit of stupidity uh, this week. It's been kind of an interesting week. Um, but we will plot our node on the opposite side to circularize, and then I would have to stop recording and come back to it later, when, of course, I forgot to press record. But we are coming up on our burn now, so we'll just uh, flip ourselves around with those solar panels not in the sun currently. A very quick burn to circularize. We are exceptionally low, 24 some odd kilometers or so, which is nice until you want to time warp for any length of anything. We'll just uh, touch that up a little bit to try to get it a little more circular, but it's uh, not entirely necessary uh, to say the least. But uh, at about this time, we will ditch our HV upper stage. We totally had enough fuel on it to very effectively break ourselves directly above base, but uh, we would have been well out of battery by then. We needed to get rid of it because it was a serious drain uh, on the mission itself. So the obvious choice was made to just pile it into the moon. 
and we will uh, jump back out to our lander, which uh, again, life uh, interrupted a little bit, but uh, I was able to come back after time warping a whole lot to uh, let it let its orbit get into a position uh, above our base. Uh, there's no real point in boring you with uh, even more sped up footage of this thing just uh, sitting in an orbit for about 15 days while we waited for our landing window uh, to present itself. But we do have a solid pass uh, and our solar panels are definitely charging the um, battery inside of our computer core, which is nice. We are not uh, this thing isn't completely screwed it can still function uh, so long as it's in the daylight so we are going to have to plan our hopping missions uh, a little carefully so we'll make our initial burn to uh, deorbit ourselves and then plot a node uh, over the base we will probably have to make some corrections to the north I believe uh, just to make sure that we can come down right on top of it might as well take some pictures while we're here it's more science that we can collect for later and uh, more stuff we can give the uh, researchers in the lab to do. And then uh, just a few minutes out, we will start our descent burn in earnest. Uh, trying very hard to get an angle here where I can see the little blue line and the X and see if they're lining up. So uh, I apologize if this angle is super awkward, but this is actually the part where I was leaning very close to my screen trying to make out blue pixels on a light gray background. Um, not very much fun, but uh, I do think that I'm getting this whole plotting a descent path uh, nailed down to the floor. Uh, I can't in this one on Valentina. Uh, this was all computer controlled crashing. <laughs> so uh, just making efforts to keep our apoapsis behind us just to uh, help out with the efficiency and make sure that a three kilometer per second landing doesn't end up taking four and a half kilometers per second at Delta V. And then very gradually slowing ourselves down, we'll replot the node with the engines off again, just to make sure. And this is where we will correct out to the north just a little bit. Uh, see if we can't bring ourselves right down on top of the base. That should be it in that crater uh, pretty much in front of us. There's our targeting reticle. So we can start to make our final breaking burn, uh, adjusting ourselves uh, to come down directly on top of the target. I've kind of got this uh, lining it up thing almost figured out. This is the awkward part where you kind of have to eyeball it. But once you get in a little closer, uh, you can almost do this entirely by the nav ball, which is a lot of fun. You just got to figure out how to push that retrograde vector on top of that indicator for your target, which in this case is the flag that sits uh, right next to the external fuel depot connected to the research center itself. Um, it's a good spot to land, especially if there's something that you want to put fuel in later. And this would definitely be a candidate for that. We uh, probably actually need a larger fuel reserve down here on the moon. But I think... Uh, Two more supply runs are going to have to be made to this research center uh, in the very near future. One of life support, they're down to about 80 some odd days, and uh, one of fuel, both so we can top off the Lunar Uber uh, Little Bird and so that we can get some fresh fuel in this uh, mobile science collection hopper. We should probably think of an official name for this thing, um, to be real honest. <laughs> Calling it a, a a science hopper is a little awkward. There's the research base right below us. Uh, if you have a good name for this little science hopper thing, please let me know. I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Uh, we cannot land on top of the hab, so we will try to direct ourselves out, get the landing gear out of the way, and then, of course, I will hit Z instead of X. Parked. Eh, a little bit of slide, a little bit of rough around the edges, but... We've landed, and just a uh, a few meters away from the flag that we had targeted, uh, about five meters, 4.9, according to the science. Uh, and we will uh, spend a little time collecting a little data here to seeing what of these instruments we have run here in the lowlands and what we have not. The seismic hammer actually gives us uh, some good data to work with, which is awesome, because I don't think I've been able to make that thing work really ever. And then uh, engineer Laura Douglas here will collect two pipe connectors and her trusty uh, lunar-rated DeWalt drill. 
and uh, get our little hopper friend here out and hooked up to the uh, supply lines. You also collect this seismic sensor that actually needs to be placed further from the hammer to be uh, any good. It should give us uh, quality readings once we can deploy the hammer uh, in a different biome. This little seismic sensor thing should be able to give us a um, better science reward or a different result from the experiment. Uh, I was going to put it on the fuel tank. I decided, yeah, that's probably not a great idea, especially if we're going to upgrade that fuel tank later. So we will just hook this thing up uh, directly on the research center. Uh, she can't run it from out here. Uh, a scientist could, uh, but we'll deal with that later. She does also need to collect the film from up here, which is a little problematic, and uh, even more so that maybe we should put a ladder on this thing so that we could get to those science experiments a little easier. But she has uh, grabbed the film. Uh, she can't deposit it externally in the cupola, so I guess she'll just uh, jump in and enjoy the view, and then we can get that science running out to the lab. But hey, look, turns out our lab is full. We got 500 science we can radio in. So we'll do that first. Uh, we, we will radio back the uh, this other experiment that we have here uh, because we cannot put it in the lab. That's the seismic data. I think that's what we recovered from the hammer. Uh, apparently it's already been run through the lab or is in the queue waiting to be researched in the lab. I'm I'm not entirely sure, but we can get 32 science for radioing it in. That's pretty cool. Yeah, about 82 days of life support here, so we're going to have to get a resupply out here fairly quickly. Uh, I will take provisions here to uh, lock the life support in the science hopper and the lander just in case we need to make an immediate departure and also make sure to top off these batteries. You know, I am about research, uh, resource transfer anyway. So uh, I think that's where we're going to leave this episode today, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.